Nvidia makes some pretty interesting stuff. They make graphics cards for your computer so you can run games, but they also make self-driving stuff for car brands like Tesla. That's pretty cool. And now they're trying to make games a little more accessible to everyone. They reached out to me to talk about their GeForce Now service, a service that allows you to pretty much stream a game the way that you watch streams on Twitch and YouTube, but directly to your computer and you're the one controlling it. You're the one playing it. Let's dig in a little deeper. Let's be honest, they reached out last year and asked me to try out this service and I was like, sure, why not? Let's see if anything's changed since then. The service is pretty interesting. It works on Windows, the Nvidia Shield, and well, Mac OS. For one, I noticed that the service is in beta. And if you do wanna join in and use the service, then you'll be put on a wait list for access to the beta. However, if you own an NVIDIA Shield, then you can have access right away. To be honest with you, I find this service most useful for people with like light laptops. Because let's face it, you don't want to buy a big, bulky, hunking metal machine of a gaming laptop. Those aren't nice. And let's be honest, if you can use them, like the name implies, laptop on your lap, you're probably going to get burned or a heat stroke while playing games. With GeForce Now, you won't really run into those kinds of issues because you can just use a thin and light laptop, but you will use a decent amount of battery life because it is constantly streaming and pulling new data from the cloud to your computer. So how I think it works based on my fiddling around is, well, you download it and install it, and then you see a list of games. This list of games is Nvidia's supported list of games that has the most compatibility with this service. GeForce Now supports a couple of launchers like Steam, Uplay, and Battle.net in case you like games from any of those three companies. Just to clarify, you do have to own the game to actually launch the game. These are just the games that Nvidia has said is compatible with their service. To open up Steam, you actually have to click on a game that you know is on Steam, press play, and then voila, the Steam login client is right there. Just log in. Of course, to run games, you need a good stable internet connection, and they do have a built-in tool that allows you to see if your internet connection is good enough to do so. There's plenty of settings you can change in the options menu to get the best quality for you based on your own internet service. Shadow the Tomb Raider looks pretty nice on GeForce now. I'm not the best Tomb Raider player. I never have been. Haven't played one in a long time, so I may be sucking right now, as you can see on the screen. The gameplay is pretty interesting. The world seems really inviting and really rich in detail. And the little amount of combat that I got to play so far, since I'm at the beginning of the game, was also nice and fluid. But you can also see that since my internet connection isn't the best, in the top right hand side corner, the resolution is changing and it's giving me details about my internet connection. This is a great feature. It tells you what you need to fix, what's going on behind the scenes and why quality is fluctuating. Everything works perfectly. And to be honest with you, I played this for about 20 to 30 minutes before I remembered that I'm actually recording a video right now. Playing this game really shows you the ins and outs that your internet connection can have on your GeForce experience. This service isn't completely polished. For example, when you click on a game and it opens its a virtual machine client, you can close one of the windows within the virtual machine and then have nothing show up. Then you get a lot of windows beeping noises when you click your mouse. To get out of it on my MacBook at least, I have to command tab and then manually close the window. It's a tad bit annoying, but this is still a beta product, so I'll give it some leeway. So overall, what do I think about the service now? It provides some really nice gaming functionality for those who can't afford high performance gaming hardware, as well as for those with thin and light laptops who just want to game on the go. It provides new avenues for gaming that didn't exist a couple of years ago. There could be methods to make the service a little more presentable and easier to use, and hopefully they fix that by the time it launches. So what do you guys think? Did Nvidia do a good job making a service like this? Would you be interested in using something like this? Leave that down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.